Hey everyone, John Henry here, Slingshot Futures Trading Group, SSFTG. Welcome to the video. In this one, we're going to be going over some of the major metrics that NinjaTrader uses within their trade performance tab, the MAE, the MFE, and the ETD, those three different metrics. And really, what they are and how they work and how we can use them to our advantage and are they useful? Should you even pay attention to them, right? What the heck are they? So first off, before we can go in and understand what they are, we have to know what the acronym stands for. Uh, so MAE, let's just start from the top here. Let's make this fun, nice and big. Uh, so the first one is MAE, and that is the Maximum Adverse Excursion. Okay, the next one is going to be the M. FE, and the reason why I'm doing these both together is because they're basically the same but opposing. You'll see what I mean. Maximum favorable excursion. These two together uh, are telling us effectively two very important pieces of information. We'll get to ETD in a second. Uh, but what the MAE is telling us is the maximum adverse excursion. It's a statistic that basically represents the average maximum rundown that your trade experiences. So once you get into a trade, what's the worst price that it reached from your entry point uh, from you know when you entered, how far down did it go? That's your maximum adverse excursion. So if we look at my number right here at 39, that means that from my entry point, on average, the market went against me 39 ticks. So my entry point, if I were maybe a scalper or something like that, I was more swing trading this week, so this kind of makes sense. But if I were more of a scalper, that would tell me, hey, wait a minute, I might be able to modify my entries to be quite a bit better. From a swing trade perspective, I already know what's going on there. We were building into a lot of swings, different numbers, but the, the same thing holds true. This is telling us that on average, over all the trades that I took, the market went against me, in this case, long trades, on average, 39 ticks. That means that I could have gotten a better entry on average, 39 ticks better. Now, does that mean that I should reduce my entry point by 39 ticks every single time? No. Remember, this is just an average. Uh, so keep this in mind, but this is telling us over the long run, you know, I went against me 39 ticks. Now, if you were to look at it next week and see, hey, this thing is starting to go against me 70, something's up. And you can utilize that to kind of tell you where the good entries are and if your entry timing is solid or not. Now, with that same mindset then, maximum favorable excursion is pretty straightforward. That's the distance that the market went in your favor, right? Now, remember, how does how does that work? Because, well, you know, okay, if I get in and the market goes up a million ticks after I exit, this it doesn't have anything to do with that. All this has to do is from the top of the trade, from your entry point to as far up as the market went in your favor, how far did it go, right? So if we're looking at this, my maximum favorable excursion on average is 89 ticks. That means that from my average entry point, the market is typically going 89 ticks in my direction and against me, 39 ticks. Seems to be like a pretty obvious two to one scenario, doesn't it? <laughs> so the maximum favorable excursion is effectively telling us exactly what we're trying to do in our trading strategy and our trading math. This is telling us that, well, on average, our favorable excursion is going about two to one and our adverse excursion is going about 40, uh, right? 40 to 90, a little better than two to one. Now, again, these are averages. Does that mean that I need to modify my entry by 40 ticks better in my my favorable excursion by an, no, that's not how this works. As an example, if I were averaging a trade and I were looking to get in and out at 60 ticks, but my favorable excursion was 89, well then realistically, I know that I could be giving some of that trade back at the end. It went up to 89, why did I get it out in the 60s? That's how you can use this. The same goes for the adverse excursion. It's mostly just to give you an idea of how your timing is. All right, and then we move on to the last one, which is ETD, and that stands for End Trade Drawdown. Not a lot of charting platforms track this one, but uh, it's an incredibly useful t statistic because we don't have to do all of the weird math that we were talking about with the MAE and the MFE to see, you know, how much can I bump my head? No, this actually does it for us. Uh, so the end trade drawdown statistic is basically just telling us how good our exits are when compared from our entry. 
It shows us how much we gave back from the best price that the market reached before you exited a trade. So generally speaking, a small number here is pretty desirable because that would imply uh, that your exits are pretty optimized and you're capturing the majority of the movement. Now, again, if I look at my ETD, just as an example because it's on the screen, my ETD is 75. So what is that telling me? Well, that's telling me that generally I gave back 75 ticks off the highs. I should be able to, on average, try to reach out for an extra 75 ticks. Now here's the thing, this changes over time. This week could be an incredibly bullish or bearish trending market that's offering really nice running markets. So an ETD that's relatively high on that kind of week would make sense because it just keeps going. Uh, now, generally in those strong trends, you're exiting after it's pulled back a little bit, taking your stop out, etc. So this is kind of telling us how effective our, op well, really how effective our exits are. And it's a really useful statistic because that makes it so that we don't have to do all the weird math from the MAE and the MFE. So that's going to be the major three different averages that they have. And remember, they're averages. This doesn't mean that I need to go for 75 ticks more on every single trade. But it does tell me that this past week so far, uh, or well, the last few days, I might be able to squeeze out an extra couple ticks. My ETD is relatively high and I'm exiting kind of far down. My exits aren't as optimized as maybe they could be. My favorable excursion is 89. So my exits and my, my entries and adverse, is, it shows us, it's basically a two to one. So we know that that part's solid and the ETD is just telling us, hey, I might be able to milk a little bit extra out of that next setup. Something to consider. Now, again, they're just averages. Don't go overboard with them. But if you have any questions about them, make sure to send me an email, jhb at ssftg.com or drop them in the comments below. Hopefully that helps you out though. And as always, enjoy, rest up, and we'll talk to you all in the next. Thanks.